Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Zhenya. I am a tester. Today, I'd like to talk with you about API testing. I recently noticed that many smart and creative ideas and possibilities come up when we're doing something absolutely different, like having a shower, reading a book, reading a piece of fiction. So the idea of my presentation is not an exception. I got the idea for this presentation was playing the guitar. So I decided, why not structure all the knowledge which I have on API testing and do some kind of methodology. It would be quite a good methodology based on notes. Everyone knows this music notes. There will be no problem with remembering each of them. So, and I realized that all these notes mean something. It turns out that there are not so many notes. I know the music education, and I know what we have here, like the C, D, E, F, G, A, B. It's quite simple. And actually, the, all the letters of the English alphabet starting from the letter C. So if you start from the note A, you get A, B, C, F, G. And each of these notes has certain statement. If some of you play the music and you know that C means different, that it's marked differently for those who really like the music, but this will not affect our methodology. So here I present the API testing according to notes. And the first one is C. C means clearness. It means the API testing should be completely transparent and clear. And this is the principle of the minimum surprise. If you do not know what this element for, then its behavior should be most expected from the user side. For instance, we don't know traffic rows, but there is the highest likelihood that the red light bans something. The same should be applicable to the endpoints and to the API testing in our case. It should be clear, at least from the first approach, what we should get at the end. This is easy to find when you use the model action object or a web noun combination. On the left side, we say what we do. And the right side, we mention the object that experiences our actions. So first, it's important in the API to do this, get books. An API reads like a book, like fiction book. As a verb, you may use any kind of verb from the methodology. It could be a multiple notion could be single notion it's not that important but if you're doing the testing referring related to books and you're mixing the nouns and verbs all together then you get the request which looks something like this but they're very hard to understand they're difficult to reception they're difficult to remember and it's easy to get lost good practice will be to split Verbs in the left, nouns in the right side. But if you're testing this book selling service, you might have additional requests, such as the ones that you can see in the screen. It's quite difficult to remember all of them. That's why I say it again. A good experience suggests that you should divide verbs and nouns separately. It could be a single request, there could be multiple requests, but it doesn't change the idea. You also should pay attention to the API and point to the fact that methods of endpoints should not be abstract. It is good to be abstract at the stage of development, but not good for API testing. Otherwise, when you look at the endpoint, you won't have clarity what you should expect as a feedback. If you say items, the data it's not clear what you will get in the response. That's why if you see such requests, it makes sense to talk to the developers and ask them to rewrite. The complicated parts of the request should better be hidden behind the question mark. Then you will find the situation that your code will be read as a piece of fiction. So requests must be clear. And judging by this request, you could understand that the charm should be horror, and this will be the book in the horror. Here there is no need to think 
twice. That's a very simple and easy principle. So that's why please make sure and try to do so that the API code reads well. Then the D, no, D stands for documentation. Documentation is very essential for API testing because this is something that the users will first of all face. If documentation is written in not a nicely manner, you will have troubles with the support of the product. Usually documentation is developed for programmers only. There are certain and the data that must be included in the documentation. I took an example from the web server which sells animals' foods. And here I indicated what should be included in the documentation package. First of all, API methodology have to be described. Status codes have to be described, both positive and negative. Parameters and data, both mandatory and uh, optional, then there should be description of the methodology which data should be processed and returned, then examples of codes and links to more detailed educational materials. You should be very careful with the examples of the codes, because if this example doesn't work, it's going to be a failure. Such things happen, so please take care and please be very attentive to this. Another good way how you can check the correctness of your API documentation is to ask somebody from the just outside to do something basics within your system. If such a person managed to do it within 5-10 minutes, then it's fine. If it took him only 15 minutes or, or didn't work out in that at all, so that documentation has to be additionally elaborated and changed. That's why please pay attention to documentation. We are now coming to the next no, which is the E stands for exceptions. Exceptions are the situations that may occur when you work at any code. And our joint task as being testers is to bring the system into the position which will exclude any kind of failures. Usually such cases are clearly written in the documentation. When I was preparing for my presentation, I was trying to find out what is the error 405 stands for, or 404 stands for, but I could not find. Maybe I was doing something wrong, but if such errors are not written in documentation, then they should include the opportunity to restore them, which didn't work in my case. Though if these errors are covered by the documentation, this is good, but there are cases is when the documentation is not available and you don't know what to follow. Some problems that you might have with the API testing is when you send a request, there is everything, there is feedback, it's successful, but sometimes there are client errors or there are server errors. And the response in the ATP protocol, this is a TOO, which is OK, or 400. It means that you made something wrong, which is the bad request of 500 internal server error. You may easily follow these codes and uh, know that you might have just three situations. Please also pay attention to the fact that sometimes the text of the error describes an error itself. Once when I was testing an API, a developer who was also a lover of copy-paste developer, and when you send a request, for example, search fridge, which is not available in the system, you get the response, such fridge is non-existent. Then, when you do the user registration, you get the feedback, such fridge is non-existent. And of course, it's funny and not clear. Of course, it was at the testing stage, and it was OK. But if it happened at the stage of production, that would have been much more complicated. Uh, I told you that being abstract is not that good. So when all these abstract messages about that is not a good case because if you want to get the right message you have to log in make an action and see what the problem is about sometimes you can get examples like this oh something bad happened it's not clear what happened so please try to avoid it and inform your developers that in case the user faces such an description it will be not clear for him here i mean uh, not only form of api but the format of data output which comes with the response. So in API, general format, normally you have 
I think some JSON, XML, but like this or that format more. And if you want to make it parallel, use various formats. There are different methods to do that. Or you can make it through different points. We can set format as a parameter of the query, etc. So it shouldn't be mixed. The data have to come in a single format. And uh, what else is wor worth to be noted? That the reference to the data is not sensitive to the register. Uh, because earlier the query was uh, different depending on whether it was in capital letters or small letters. So another thing regarding the re response, the format in response, there was also a situation described in Hub Hubber. Uh, they were testing a service like Booking.com and uh, you could book a um, room in a hotel, so the query looked like that. So the hotel, number of the room and the parameter was from uh, 0 to 1. So, can you tell me what is the problem with this parameter? So, something is missing, right? Or, yeah. or something is extra here. This is a uh, line and uh, figure. So, and somebody will be passing this response, or they will be passing this response with um, language like Java, in order to parse just one response, you will have to um, use some specific methods for that, so even in this with this format, you have to watch that. If it's a digit, this is the digit. If it's a line, then it's a line. So uh, there have to be the same format. And if it's a date, it should be like, for example, first date, then months, then year, not uh, for months, date, year. Then uh, next note is uh, Jim. This is the general test, it's like full scale functional testing. We use these techniques, so test design techniques, we have to formulate the parameters. Of and we send the data, it's like uh, positive, uh, fully functional testing. And here we check whether our API does what it has to and doesn't do what it doesn't. And uh, here we check in general the operability of our product. And after we complete this, then we can start with automation and if uh, the words uh, satisfaction and regress can be combined in some ways but satisfaction and regress of API are not possible to combine because you just get uh, chaotic letters and digits on the screen and in order to convert this in code so you have to use the machine so, the code it works like that. So, you send the query to Books.com, you check popular book. Most popular book, for example, is 1984. Same with the post two parameters. So we said that it's JSON, we send the query, we get the response to 100. So the code is very simple. This is the advantage of this library. So if you use uh, Java, try it. So if you are still not tracking the code, if you just send queries manually, then probably use one of these tools, either Postman or SOAP UI. So of those are quite convenient, very powerful, and do it through uh, collections, so you generate a collection, name it, and then send it for the test, and in JavaScript we indicate what exactly we want to check. So here, for example, the status is 200, the status code is 200, and if uh, it matches our expectations, then it's green, if not, it's red. It's very simple. If it's a QI, it's more powerful, but at sessions, so it has a search for the functions. 
So if we have, want to check if the response is 200, 201, so in this case it will be invalid copy, but same, if the collection passes, the test is passed, then it will become green. So using the tool is just making the automation possible. So that's the main function of the tool, so that you don't spend your time on that. And the last one is like B or H. Um, it's like hacking. H stands for hacking. And if you somebody wants to hack through API, then so if we send queries through API, we do it, we bypass the client's validation and done outside of the user interface can pass through the API query easily and cause failure in the system operation. So that's why the main idea is that first you have to forget about all restrictions of your system. You, mm, your task is to try to insert brackets uh, in your um, Queries. And, um, or quotation marks. And um, for example, there was a story uh, with the Facebook when he wanted to check retro and he uh, changed the ID for one and sent a query from Facebook on behalf of Mark Zuckerberg. That was possible only through API. You couldn't do this from interface. That's why you have to add these additional elements to check for these possibilities. Also, the Angular brackets can be inserted through the API query for updates. So there was one guy who uh, made this script and uh, he did it through Gmail. Because Gmail was trusted and uh, it was not validated, so this script could uh, be activated through this service. And the uh, API of your product has to be clear, has to be well documented, uh, checked for some special cases, special situations. The data has to be in some single format, so the functional tests have to be uh, run. We have to be checked for the possibility of hacking. That's it. Thank you for, for your attention. So we almost don't have any time left, so only for two small questions. No other questions? Hello. My name is Yelena. So I have a question regarding the note and format of data. Did you uh, use any cases with the GSM scheme and the markers? Can they be used? Yes, you can do it with Java. You can automate this process. Just two queries. But is there some specific tool for that for JSON? Yeah, I mean, you mean make JSON or checks them very fast? Well, makes. Have you ever used it? No, I do not remember the full name, but I can leave you my contact details. If possible, please contact me later. I will send you the name. For API testing, do you use tests like uh, method replacement, for example? Where the post, reports, do you use these cases? Well, uh, the method has to return to you 400 or something like uh, invalid parameters combinations. And yeah, so there were just a few questions, but still. Thank you, thank you.